So I've started reading the FMA manga, and I have to say, I'm actually enjoying it. First off, I'd like to say that I really like the artwork. It has such a nice blend of cool and comical, which really gives it a sense of personality that I feel was kind of absent from Brotherhood. I've read about 30 chapters or so, so I don't plan on dropping it anytime soon. Before we start, this video is basically just my first impressions of the manga based on what I've seen so far. These are just quick thoughts on what I liked about the manga in comparison to Brotherhood, and my opinions could change over the course of reading. Now let's get into to the real meat and potatoes of this video, and that is the comparison between the manga and FMA Brotherhood, since I've stated that I don't really like Brotherhood, and I feel like the manga fixes a lot of the issues I had with the show. Now, in my video on Brotherhood, my main gripes with the show were a rushed beginning as well as a lack of subtlety when handling very heavy topics such as racism and the horrors of war. Also, a lack of subtlety when comparing it to its 2003 counterpart in general. Now, the manga improves on both of these issues I had by a lot. First, let's begin with the rush beginning in Brotherhood. In my video, I specifically criticized episode 3 of the show, which in my opinion was the worst episode in all of Brotherhood. When reading the manga, I found it to be a lot more bearable thanks to the fact that 1. Rose was actually introduced beforehand, making Ed look like a lot less of a jerk when he berates her for believing in such a stupid religion. I do think that the way 2003 handled this material was better, since they dedicated more time to showing Ed getting a better understanding of her situation. But in the manga, Ed is made actually actively aware of the fact that Rose's boyfriend had died in an accident and the fact that she's being taken advantage of by Father Cornello. And he learns all of this before he starts attacking Rose for her beliefs, which makes it look like he's more in the right in the manga. The second thing that I thought was better in the manga was Ed's personality. I didn't want to say this in my video on Brotherhood, but I don't think Ed has much personality in Brotherhood. He comes off as the typical shonen protagonist most of the time, and sometimes he isn't even that. And every line that he says sounds like something that would be said by a protagonist, not Edward Elric. However, I'm happy to say that Ed has a lot more to him in the manga. What I liked about Ed's character in 2003, the adaptation, was that so much of his character was rooted in the fact that he was a kid, and as a kid, his whole worldview was radically changed since he had to deal with a ton of shit and emotional baggage. In the manga, this part of his personality is more emphasized. For example, if we look at the second chapter, after he finds out about the Philosopher's Stone being a fake in a scene that is a lot less comedic than in Brotherhood thanks to a panel where the realization dawns upon him, he actually uses alchemy to make a statue attack Cornello again, saying that he wasn't satisfied with the simple, I'm sorry, the stone was fake. This portrays his immature nature. You know, like a kid. He's petty. After all of the shit Cornello put him through, he wanted to give him his just desserts. It shows off a lot more of his personality than just yelling at the guy in a comedic way. In the panel that Ed attacks Cornello again, you can see that there's clearly some comedic intention there, but that's not all there is to it. With the dominating presence of the statue in the background taking an intimidating stance, you can see that Ed is really fucking angry, which fits since the one lead he had for accomplishing his goal turned out to be a dead end. In this one panel, you can see a lot more nuance and purpose when comparing it to how Brotherhood handled the scene. There were also two stories that Brotherhood cut out when adapting the manga, the Yogi plot and the train hijacking, and I feel like Brotherhood should have adapted these stories because they show off more of Ed's personality, which makes him a more flexible out character, and even if that doesn't make him likable to some people, he at least has a character. I'm not saying that there aren't moments where Ed's personality shines through in Brotherhood. I'm saying that those moments are very few in number, and most of that is due to the fact that it rushes through its early act, making characterization a problem in the long run. In the Yogi plotline, Ed shows that he's rebellious and that he's not a stickler for the rules, even literal laws. He also shows a mischievous side to himself by conning Yogi, the corrupt landowner of the gold mines, by bending the rules and making sure that none of his illegal activity is traceable. When the train was hijacked, he showed his more heroic side, a very immature hero and one prone to lashing out, but still a hero, a genuinely good person despite his faults. The next thing that I want to talk about is how the manga handled Shao Tucker. Many people defend the Shao Tucker arc in Brotherhood by saying that the real power of this moment comes from the pure shock of it all. But here's the thing, the turn of events in Brotherhood isn't that shocking. There are so many shots in Brotherhood that will instantly clue you in on how fucked up in the head Tucker is, and when he asks Nina to play with him tomorrow despite the fact that he's incredibly swamped with work, you know something bad is going to happen. Plus, the fact that there are so many goddamn close-ups of him with his glasses that are too damn shiny to see through sets a sense of foreboding in the audience, which is why I think the way Brotherhood handles Shao Tucker comes off as really corny and rushed to me. However, the manga actually does have the potential to be shocking and really sudden. The panels that the really conspicuous 
shots from the anime were based off of can be taken in a more ambiguous way. Because of the medium, this doesn't look nearly as suspicious as this. In the manga, I can actually buy the argument people use when analyzing the plotline in the anime, which is why this part of the manga is a lot more bearable than its anime counterpart. Now, as I mentioned, I like this part of the manga much more than the anime because of its medium, which brings me to my final point of this video. Like I discussed with Shaman King, the medium is incredibly important when trying to make a story as good as possible. Certain things will work better in the manga because it's a manga. Because we don't have voice acting, music, or color in the manga, the manga is automatically going to become more subtle than the animated version of this, by default. The scene where Ed is wailing on Tucker isn't nearly as obnoxious and loud as the anime version, which makes me appreciate it a lot more. And the part where Ed screams up to the sky after everything is said and done isn't as tone-breaking or awful because you read it, you don't hear it. Plus, Ed isn't even yelling into the sky in the manga, he's looking at Mustang as if taking his anger out on him. It's a lot less over the top, and that also plays more into Ed's personality. And once again, the artwork from the manga does an amazing job of capturing the emotions that Ed is experiencing right now. To those of you who say it's unfair to criticize the anime for this, you have to understand the fact that adaptations need to make changes in order to better fit the medium. And to those manga purists who say that anything different from the manga is bad, you have to realize that those sentiments are only damaging what could otherwise be incredible interpretations and reimaginings of great stories. Stories, and that most of the time, these changes that you say hurt the source material are actually approved of by the very author who wrote the source material, as is the case with FMA and Shaman King. Anyways, I'm enjoying the FMA manga. I think that it's a great read and a better alternative to Brotherhood since it shows a lot more heart characterization and it comes off as far less overbearing in a lot of ways. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll be going back to reading the manga now.